Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, honorable members of the parliament and dear colleagues. And thank you for allowing me to share. Can we go to the next slide, please? You know, I am a psychiatrist uh, with the, you know, the aim of my work involves improving lives and preventing suicide and not facilitating suicide. There are real challenges on the front line. I am a board certified psychiatrist practicing in Oregon, United States of America, and have 32 years of experience in my field. I'm going to start with this example. Let's take the example of a retired physician. Surgery removed his seriously cancerous kidney. While delirious post-operatively, he was asked to make his end-of-life care decisions by the intensive care unit doctor. He stated he did not want to live, and the physician took that to mean stopping all care. On his wife's insistence, the physician called me. I had served him for years and knew he was planning to visit Australia to be with his family and his future wishes. Ending care was not in his plan. This changed the course of his care completely and he's still alive today. It's so easy to take things at the face value and get carried away. So this is an example I wanted to share. Now, let's go, go to the next slide, please. So Oregon's Death with Dignity Act, you heard from earlier, Essentially, it comes down to who chooses voluntary self-administration of prescribed lethal drugs. And there are certain conditions to follow. I'm going to quote from Dr. Linda Ganzini, a colleague, a psychiatrist colleague, now retired. She's worked extensively and published in this field. Has said the legislation catered to only a very small group of people. Unlike hospice and palliative care, it has less to do with relief of pain, suffering, reconciliation with their family members towards the end, and more to do with having rigid, complete control of their life till the end, and often they displayed marked narcissistic personality traits. Jeez. So why do people seek death? Based on our experience in our state, the three most common frequently reported concerns that lead to seeking this option was decreasing ability to participate in activities that made life enjoyable, losing one's autonomy, loss of dignity. These are societal issues. It's is so common. Culturally, it's often people refer, refer to this far more than being medical problems inadequate pain control or concern about it is a reason in less than a third of the people as the reason for choosing Death with Dignity Act in our state. The next guess, uh, slide, please. So now let's, you know, in my work, I do a lot of capacity evaluation as I take care of a lot of elderly folks with brain injury, geriatric issues, and brain uh, neurological conditions with psychiatric conditions. Capacity evaluation is easier said than done. There are serious challenges in the capacity evaluation in terminal phase of life. Most physicians are not well-trained in forensic or geriatric psychiatry and find it very hard to perform a thorough capacity evaluation, especially with high risk consequences. At this stage in life, people are confused with fluctuating consciousness. Many cannot comprehend instructions or communicate due to language and speech limitations. They have severe cognitive problems. They have high likelihood of undiagnosed depression and dementia. Their capacity can be affected by a wide range of conditions and medications they take. Delirium, traumatic brain injuries, neurological conditions such as Parkinson's disease, underlying medical conditions, including heart disease, lung disease, liver disease, fear, pain, fatigue, worry can all affect capacity. Patient's ability to comprehend and express language is very important in obtaining consent. So let's go to the next slide, please. 
So the medical capacity evaluation, especially when it comes to such high risk end of life decision requires four aspects to be evaluated, including understanding, expressing a clear choice, appreciation of the facts and how it relates to themselves, reasoning ability to compare options and infer consequences. One can be verbal and make a choice such as stating with, I don't want to live, but may still fail to meet other three stand, standard of capacity evaluation. Expressing a clear choice alone does not demonstrate patient has capacity. When my patients with schizophrenia stopped eating, started refusing kidney dialysis, stating that she was ready to meet her Lord and she was cured and we were lying to her, it did not take much before she became delirious. I had to place her on involuntary psychiatric hold because she was clearly demonstrating lack of capacity even though she could express a choice and started her back on involuntary antipsychotic medication. And soon she was back eating and continuing her dialysis. Many non-terminal illnesses can quickly become terminal if one withholds or refuses treatment in this case. Once again, the capacity changes over time. The prior self and today's self may have different capacity. Having capacity at the time of prescription may not mean that it is the case at the time patient is ingesting the drug as many hold on to drugs for a long time. So let's go to the next slide, please. So what exactly is involved? I mean, I had to reflect on this to let this sink in. This is what Lisa from California described of her aunt's assisted dying. She was there in that moment. The full cocktail included two anti-nausea pills, an anti-seizure pills, and 100 capsules of secobarbital. My attention turned to the kitchen table where my husband and sister, wearing latex gloves, frantically scraped the powder from 100 capsules with toothpicks trying to beat the clock. The mountain of powder we poured into more sugar syrup created half a cup of sludge so bitter it literally burned my tongue. The day was fraught and frightening. We had been forced to assist in the most bizarre fashion, jumping through seemingly random legal hoops and meeting arbitrary deadlines while my aunt suffered and finally emptying capsules, making an elixir so vile, I cried when I knew she had to drink it. This was death with dignity. There is no dignity in this kind of death. And you heard from the previous speaker, sometimes it drags on for two days. I had to reflect on this to let this sink in as a physician having worked hard having dealt with patients who are suicidal, who have completed suicidal, suicide and died by suicide. So this is probably what it really means. So let's go to the next slide, please. Turning healers into killers. My work involves saving lives, not deliberately shortening life. Are we abetting suicide? Physicians will become sellout to a system that wants to cover up the lack of healthcare equity. Instead of improving our healthcare system, are we asking our doctors to participate in this cover-up of a failure? My state, Oregon, has been ranked at the bottom of mental health care system in the U.S. for long. We are 49th out of 50s in 2021. Suicide is the leading cause of death in ages 10 to 24 and in the elderly. Firearms, overdoses are the leading cause. Access to geriatric care is dismal as many will not accept the federal Medicare insurance. Politicians are looking for reasons to cover up this failure. Wish to hasten death in terminal stage of life is a complex challenge. Many studies indicate depression, hopelessness, low sense of spiritual well-being are the strongest predictors of a desire for hasten death in terminally ill. The lack of joy, purpose, not feeling useful is a common expression 
and should prompt further exploration of factors one can mitigate and not rush to prescribing death. It is found in all cultures. While most individuals requesting this do not carry a diagnosis of depression on their chart. However, studies have suggested that quarter to half of the request came from individuals with depression. Unfortunately, as you heard in Oregon, only 1.2%, that's three of those who requested were referred to psychiatric consultation in 2020. Many more may have undiagnosed treatable disorders such as depression. For patients, for example, patients diagnosed with cancer are at, are at high risk of dying by suicide. Did we end up missing treatable causes? It's always an op open question for me. Let's go to the next slide, please. It's an ethical slippery slope. We are dealing with death on demand, with physician shortage in both our countries. Difficult to have physician to remain with the patient when they self-administer the drugs. In 2020, for instance, only 11.8% of the patient, the physician was present at the time patient ingested. In nearly 48%, there was no one there. If patient wakes up, what do you do then? They are told not to call 911, not to take them to emergency as that will lead to police report. And in about a third of them, they are ambivalent. They are not deciding which way to go. There's always the ethical dilemma as some physician and hospice care providers feared breaching their institutional policies and becoming subject to litigation and abandonment. Death on demand, physician-assisted suicide or euthanasia is not part of hospice and palliative care. One participant explained it so well. This is a sudden end to death, a more determined time, date where life will end. In 2020, for instance, the patient physician relationship was eight weeks, anything from zero to 1,020 weeks. There was not much time or relationship with the patient to ev evaluate the patient completely and decide which way to go. So let's go to the next slide, please. Dead don't speak. There is zero accountability, oversight, and no complaints so far. We have been practicing having this law for close to 20 years now. Law does not include any oversight or regulation and the records are destroyed after one year. The death certificate simply says death as from natural causes. Only 2.2% of the Oregon physicians prescribed it. This is an unregulated practice. As there is no peer review, medical board is not aware of who practices what they prescribe there is serious risk for safeguard and requirements to be ignored. It has become like a runaway train and we have to be cautious and please do not allow this to be an option in your country before you lose track of what is going on. So thank you very much.